This is the grave of Elsie Sterling. She died in 1918 at the age of 21. Uh, her stone had fallen off and was just propped up against the uh, the base here. And uh, John Appel of Atlas Preservation is leading a class here on how to reset monuments. Uh, so you'll see the the video here um, of him leading this class. I'm gonna take a look and see what's going on here. Still bonded here, but this was probably reset. So now we can just see what's under here. It's really soft ground. Yeah, it'll come out. It doesn't seem that big. If it's moving already, but. So, uh, Exactly what it showed. That's all right. Just disappears. Pieces of two by four cut up. These are great for the fulcrum that he's using. Leverage. <laughs> Put a tiny bit of like something under it, maybe. To uh, actually, there's a lot of debris under there. Let's just clean it out better. Some kind of uh, it's a modern material because it's it's a repair. Also, you can see the original pin here failed. Obviously, how Forged. long do those pins last? Huge range. I mean, some are still great. Other ones expand and break the stone. So it depends on how big they were and especially what they put around the pin to anchor them together. And so sometimes they used like a soft mortar. And, it, and that, or that, then it didn't do damage, but so a lot of time actually they use sulfur because you could make it molten and pour it in. But unfortunately what happens with sulfur when it's against rusting metal is it makes sulfuric acid in a dilution. And so it tends to dissolve everything. It, sometimes the stone just disintegrates. It's really bad in certain places, especially when it's more polluted, uh, more polluted areas. Uh, much worse damage. Places like Philadelphia, Washington D.C., Baltimore. It's, it's, it's bad. The stones are breaking. So what I'm trying to say is that it expands so much, metal can double, triple in in, in size. It's called metal jacking, rust jacking, and so this it'll literally crack the stone. It'll break it into pieces sometimes. And. Um, Big problem in some areas, but I don't see a lot of pin damage here, so that's a good thing. That's a stainless steel brush. The only time we want to use metal is on the mating surfaces because these are never going to see the light of day again. And so we're just going to keep it on the flat like that. And uh, we've just got that all cleaned up pretty well. And then we'll work on cleaning the other side. So if we don't have a good clean surface, we're not going to ever you know, get it to join well. So it's like prep, just like if you're painting a wall, although painting is, you know, all cosmetic mostly, but it's not gonna, the paint won't last if you don't do good prep. And so this is the same way. And then also it'll push the pieces apart. A lot of time people join on top of previous repairs. So yeah, we can just stand that up temporarily. Actually, we could, we could do that, but yeah, we can do that. Exactly, so let's just clean the heavy stuff here.
So we were able to save this foundation, which is a good thing, mm -hmm. but that's not that common. Usually when a foundation goes, it's hard to work with. Dry stone construction is a whole thing that it's amazing how strong you could build dry stone arches if you have the skill. Well, this isn't a heavy one. If it was heavier, we could we can um, move it. Well, anyway, it's heavy enough, so it's it's. Uh, I'm just gonna get it up on a pad so I don't dig it into the mud. So I can walk things pretty easily. This is an odd shape to walk, but it is still walkable. Not that heavy. What I'm going to do is just get this right in a sweet spot so I can then just flip it up. Okay, and as far as I know, it goes, to, I'm good. As far as I know, it goes the same way. To keep it simple, if you roll things over and you don't spin them, then they go back the same way. The other thing is taking photos before you start, but it's, a lot of time it's obvious if all the inscription goes one way. Sometimes there's writing on two sides or front and back. That and comes with experience and mistakes. Can we get more? Well, that's why we have the digital photos now we that's can right. go right back to. Yep. But when we had 35 millimeter, then if you had a question, you had to go get develop the film. It's a narrow, slender little monument. Um, what's not a common shape for me to be working on? Uh, this is an adult or a child? I would suspect yeah. a child or someone that was not after it. Because it's so small. And it was overshadowed by a very big monument. Yeah. Yeah. This had a large like cylinder with a capstone and yeah. there's elements missing. Yeah, lots of them are all so I get, And then we're going to have monument setting compound around the outside. Now people want to do these in different ways. There's no one right or wrong way. But um, some people think you should use a mortar on this, but mortar is not a strong bonding material and a soft mortar especially is not going to give you any strength. Um, they, they probably originally set this with like a plaster or lime mortar. They used lead in a lot of the formulas back then. Um, lead was in everything. Lead was in all paint um, as a dust powder. Litharge was red lead, but the white lead, I mean, that was in like all the paint. I mean, it was pipes. <laughs> so this epoxy putty is really, uh, you mix it in a one-to-one -one, um, and I just halved it. But the most, the, the common one is this. This color is an off white, but I just grabbed this one. But it has some unusual working characteristics. For one thing, it'll mix and get softer if it's it mi on with wet. And also, it'll set underwater. And um, after, we're not going to, in these applications, this is not relevant, but you can uh, grind or sand, drill, or paint it. So it's unusual because most epoxies don't, will not allow any paint on them. So it's a, it's a unique material. So it comes all the way from South Africa because I started importing it five years ago. But it went to the moon on Apollo 11. And so it's the, uh, from a company Prattley. Um, so their um, claim to fame is it's the only thing from South Africa that ever went to the moon. This is going to be invisible. So I'm going to um, make it so that it is um, just a little smaller than the space it's fitting in. And I'm gonna roll, just roll it in between. It's like I said, not there's no room, here, so it's, it's like it's, it's okay, it's okay, it'll work fine. And, um, then we're gonna put monument compound around it. Do another monument a little bigger. That'll be a better example of setting. We could also do an unstable monument that's not really. Yeah. to fall out. We'll just take care of that after. Because this is so narrow, it's going to want to slide. But what I'll do is I'll put my, my knee in front of it because I've done this a few thousand times. And okay, and now we go back low down on it like this and get it to seat itself, get it to squeeze out and um, come down to the spacers basically. 
and then we're gonna trim it. And the other thing is this, this has a wash on it and that is the angle, that's what you see right here. That's called a drop wash on a monument. That's aesthetic, but also it sheds water. So um, the wash uh, establishes where this sits. So after we trim this, we can sight it and see. We can measure it also, but it's really more of a visual thing with, with a stone like this. So I'm gonna trim it and you're gonna get a nice even edge like that. I love to watch people that know what they're doing. <laughs> when you do a few thousand, you get good at it. <laughs> so I started setting monuments in 1986 and I set thousands of them, but then I got into fixing them full time right around Y2K. As I like to say, the last time the world is gonna end. So I've been traveling around the country about, about 15 years, but it's, you know, one thing led to another. Um, I got into this full time, right, like I said, right around 2000. And then uh, people in my area started wanting me to teach them stuff. And so I, you know, was doing some workshops and then it started to, you know, grow from there. Then I was, um, I started doing a lot of training because, you know, I, I share all the information I have. And so a lot of people don't want to tell you what they know. They try to keep things secrets. And so I just, uh, just share all the information, you know, and I say to people that have hand skills that are like tradespeople. I mean, they could be from any, they could be artists too, but uh, people that are like electricians or plumbers or, uh, uh, you know, farmers or ranchers um, or people that work in um, refineries and stuff like that. A lot of them pick up these skills quickly is what I'm saying. Because if you know how to use tools and, you, and, and you're strong and you're, you're accustomed to using, you know, shovels and levels and you've done some masonry, I mean, you can pick up the skills, you know, so you got it to seed itself a little more. And the thing is, too, historic stones, the milling and everything varies a little, so they're not always perfectly square. That's much better. It's within the bubble. That's perfect on that side, so it's actually not cut perfectly symmetrical. That's better that way to come back at things. The thing is that it's such a light stone that I have to help it to go down because it's it's the, it, the putty is is thick enough to be opposing it. With a heavier monument, you're not going to get that effect. So it's much closer. And, uh, so it's about how long trim. will that putty last? Oh, uh, this will last indefinitely, pretty much forever, unless someone hits it because it's a double bond. So the seal on the outside will protect the epoxy putty internally and the seal on the outside if it's not broken will actually slowly harden it'll stay pliable for a long time on the inside and so because it squeezes out but some squeezes in and so it'll harden from the outside slowly by oxidizing but it'll take a long time to get hard okay no more tv tonight i know this piece wasn't loose but would it right pay to put the... uh you could do that if you want to do that you're welcome to and i'll show you how you do that and i have really um tool well suited for that, which is a really narrow tuck pointer. And we'll just mention about tools for a second. And so um, tuck pointers are what we were just, what I was just using, but that was a bigger version. Um, the other most common tool you're gonna wanna use to do a lot of stuff um, in this field will be a margin trowel. So the two probably first tools, if you, cause you could do um, mortar work with this and you can also do other things. Um, but this is a margin trowel two by six inches. And this is, this is a tuck pointer. This one's a little bigger than, um, this would be more of a, a three eighths would be, these are all very uh, well worn, um, but um, they come in all different sizes. But anyway, what started the whole discussion, this is quarter inch, that's a smaller one still. See, so they step down, um, you know, in order obviously, and they go from the smallest is what I was going for, is three sixteenths, which is uh, this one. Try to get one that's a little, better condition here so that's a little cleaner and that's a 3 16 and okay. um, that's the smallest one made these are all Marshallton tools and these are um, well Marshallton is in Iowa still the corporate but now they make these in Arkansas but they're inexpensive tools they make in overseas um, but these are still made in America 
Um, also, these are either a wood grip or a soft grip, um, and these are their premier line tools. And this is a bigger um, margin trowel. You don't see these often. It's a two by eight. These are excellent for mixing in a bucket. If you're mixing a little mortar and you can put it in a two gallon bucket, you can kind of tumble it around like a washing machine and it makes it really easy. So to John, mix. before you go further, the, the, the thin one that you're talking about could go on here. Would that epoxy provide enough of a seal and hold even just on the outside? So what, uh, what I'm not gonna... This is already bonded here, Correct. and someone reset it. Yep. So this was just going to be to fill this joint, yep. just so it's a seal and so biological doesn't start. So we're not going to use any epoxy on it. We'll just use the monument setting compound. Okay. And so if we just roll this little bit out like this. Um, so anyway, um, so if we come in like this, and this is not toxic. You, you don't need gloves, but it'll get your hands dirty from, there is oil in it, so, but that doesn't hurt the stone, but, don't, but you shouldn't smear it into it. And so you want to stay, keep it in the joint. And then, um, yeah, I can try to come around. And the other side. Well, if you're going to do all the sides, so, yeah. Um, I was just doing a demo because someone yeah, talked sure. about it. Now, this is kind of a, a, a much brighter, it's, it'll, it'll weather, well, it's, it'll yeah, weather yeah. in. Yeah. But anyway, it's, it's, um, it's it's well, it's all that makes sense to see it. Yeah, I, I mean, so yeah, I'm with you. So it's it's not hard to do. Okay. And we can just run this around like this. And, uh, if someone wants to uh, play with this a little, there's really nothing. Yeah,